you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So when we talk about kingdom, we refer to the fullness of the culture, the governing influence, the modus operandi of heaven, finding expression in the earth. This is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Here's how he said, Our Father. Listen. Listen. This is Jesus teaching. The word, our father, please sit down. Our father, the word Abba. Abba means source. Abba means sustainer. Abba means defender. So when you come to him, he's not saying recite our father. He's saying come with this consciousness that the one you are coming to is Abba. Meaning do not have plan B. Lord, if you fail me, I'll quickly run to that shrine. No. Come to him as Abba. Please sit down. Number two, he said, which art in heaven. That means you will need faith in your communication. Because he is in a domain that is not earthly and not three-dimensional. Which art in heaven means that you will require faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says, without faith it is impossible possible to please him for everyone who comes to God has two assignments number one you must believe that he exists then number two you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him our father who art in heaven number three hallowed be your name listen hallowed be your name means even though even though Jesus is Lord and he's made you a partaker of his life you must realize that your dominion is not absolute dominion your dominion is shared dominion you are who you are because of who he is not that it was an act of your own so maintain the spirit of reverence even though there is liberty in approaching him hallowed be your name and then he says thy kingdom come that means the priority of your prayer should be that his governing influence. You notice he said thy kingdom come in earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the only way his kingdom comes is when his will is being done. If his will is not done, his kingdom cannot come. And the Bible says his will is done in earth. That first earth being you. not just your environment the earth is you first listen do you know why he's telling you to focus on thy kingdom come because many of the other prayers became necessary because of the absence of the kingdom coming that if you pray if thy kingdom come really happens you will not be able to have any other prayer again that many prayer that we pray are a side effect of the kingdom not coming Ask uncle to give me 10 naira. Ask uncle to give me 10 naira every day. Ask uncle to look for a job for me. It's the lack of a job that necessitates that prayer of 10 naira every day. So he's saying, I am benevolent. You will get the 10 naira. But my ultimate is not to keep giving you 10 naira every day. Ask that the kingdom and its culture and all that the kingdom carries, let it find expression. If the kingdom comes, you will not pray for healing again. There will not be need. If the kingdom comes, you will not because the Bible says that the kingdom has an assignment to replicate itself in earth as it is in heaven. So there is a reference. Are we blessed? But you see, all these things I have said will mean absolutely nothing to one that the Bible calls regenerate. It comes from the word regen. It's a change of state. You have received the life of God 
because you believed his report but stopping there will make you not to be productive as far as the counsel of God and the purposes of God is concerned and so you have an assignment and you have a mandate to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit as he begins to introduce you to the concept of the kingdom where Jesus is no longer a weak savior hanging on a tree Jesus is the king of the universe where man is not just an irresponsible helpless man no now he's empowered by the Holy Ghost to take responsibility in the gospel of salvation man is resting God is walking in the gospel of the kingdom God is resting man is walking but he's not walking based on his strength he's walking empowered by the spirit are we blessed it is lack of the understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that continues to produce the decadence that we see in society the gospel of the kingdom is the part of the gospel that anybody can relate with even if he's not born again because the benefit of the gospel of the kingdom translates into the well-being of not just people but a territory that people can see the hand of God the quality of the living of people are we together now by the time the gospel of the kingdom is well communicated crime rates will reduce because you will learn under the gospel of the kingdom that irresponsibility is not a kingdom concept are you seeing now so you will find out that young men now take responsibility the larger part of society will be full of responsible young men because they were indoctrinated by the gospel of the kingdom that there is excellency in being responsible now the government can see there will be statistics to show for it whether they are born again or not that the crime rate has reduced within this region because men and women have found value in knowing that it pays to be responsible there are many pillars i hope that we'll look at that tomorrow our time is gone we have to pray but there are many pillars that the gospel of the kingdom hinges upon and then we have to also understand kingdom advance maybe i should just touch on that and then we'll pray we cannot understand thy kingdom come thoroughly until we understand what we call kingdom advancement you know growing up for a very long time i had a prayer like this father these offerings that are collected let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom and i wondered what does that mean what is the advancement of his kingdom please if you're writing write this down this is a congregation of profound knowledge write it down kingdom advancement refers to any and every scriptural means deployed any and every scriptural means deployed to enthrone Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities every and any scriptural means deployed to the end that Christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that is kingdom advance so kingdom advance is employing every scriptural mechanism available internet worship preaching education business and finance provided it is a scriptural strategy and the end will be to enthrone christ in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities it is called kingdom advance and what you call your assignment is your contribution to that larger picture that's it what you call my assignment or my purpose is the contribution the role that you have to play as far as that big picture 
of thy kingdom come or kingdom assignment is concerned. Please look up. If you are Mary, your assignment is to use your womb and give birth to Jesus. That means if you misuse your life, you would have wasted your assignment because that womb must be protected and it must be sacred because of Jesus that will come out of it. Do you know that a person's assignment on earth can actually be to give birth? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your assignment can be a kingdom financier, for instance. If you're a kingdom financier and you have a hundred million, you'll be surprised how disappointed God will be in you because it's not enough. For someone who is not called to do what you're doing, that may be fine. But God says, hundred million for what? How many things will it build? So you will find out he's pressing you the more and you are wondering. Someone will say, what are you still doing with money? But you realize that you have that assignment that you are supposed to supply financial resources for kingdom advance. I'm just using finances as a case study. If you're supposed to reveal the dimension of God's healing power to cause the nations to come to their knees and you're careless with your life and you do not stay to build capacity and carry that grace to the nations, you would have failed. And you see, assignments are interconnected. That means someone's efficiency is dependent on your own efficiency. If you are called to be a preacher and you fail, someone won't get born again who was connected to your sermon. Jesus in John 17 had to account for all that was given to him. Here's what he said. He said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled. I made up my mind that every role that my life would have to play as far as kingdom come is concerned, I will spend my life and spend my days playing it efficiently. That as far as it depends on me, may God not be disappointed that his purposes could not come to pass. You see that? The goal of this conference is not just for us to receive miracles and signs and wonders. That will happen, I assure you. But this is, this is a summit of matured believers. It's an attempt to upgrade us through light, through illumination, to a point where now we understand that we are not just alive for nothing. That there is a burden of God that is upon us. There are nations depending. There is a cry of the Spirit. Even at this time, He's still saying thy kingdom come. It's not a song we compose. It is an assignment that we accomplish. Africa is in desperate need for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Our nation, as you know, is in desperate need for the manifestation. And we should not stop until we see our nation and our territory reflect the life and the character of Jesus. Another concept of the kingdom, I've said a lot of things this night, Another concept of the kingdom is that in the kingdom, we don't own things. Owners are rebels. The concept of ownership does not exist in the kingdom. My thing, that's not the language of kingdom. In this kingdom, the earth is the Lord's. It tells you clearly, so don't ever claim it. The earth is the Lord's. Now, as far as responsibility is concerned, you can say my thing. But the real idea is that in this kingdom, we do not have owners. We only have stewards. And moreover, it is required in stewards. The Bible says that a man be found faithful. Ownership is the secret of high blood pressure. Ownership is the secret of greed. When God designed that whoever owns a thing becomes responsible for maintaining it. So if you own your child, you own your business, you own your certificate, you see how hard it is to maintain things. But when you are a steward, you can find rest. Because you are a caretaker, you are a manager. Let the owner take responsibility. How do you know you are an owner? By who takes both the glory and the shame. Not the glory alone. I can't claim God is taking the glory and then I take the shame. No, whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. So now you are saying God takes the glory, but your ego is being stung. So we are suspecting something there. 
Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. This is kingdom now. We are dealing with selfishness is the clearest proof of the absence of love. My definition of love is the absence of self. That's it. By any standard, if you define love that way, you are right. Love, in my definition and from scripture, is the absence of selfishness. You can measure the presence of love by the absence of selfishness. You can measure the absence of love by the presence of selfishness. More than emotions, the highest biblical index to measure love is the absence of self. It's true. Have you learned something this night? So the gospel of salvation, when we bring people, like I'll be making an altar call shortly, there are people who will come to Jesus when they are saved and they receive his life. They should not be left that way. From the foundation class to the teachings that come every week, is a process of repentance submitting them to the body of truth that now begins to translate them not just as benefactors of the life of God but responsible believers now they begin to learn the ways of God now they begin to grow in understanding are we together now this is very very powerful I made up my mind that I will never never lead a people who are just born again are not relevant to society and not relevant to kingdom come relevance is more than ambition no you can have an ambition to be great because you came from a background of maybe poverty and you want to prove a point that's too small a reason you must give yourself a bigger motivation thy kingdom come jesus revealed jesus glorified jesus revealed jesus glorified in business Jesus revealed Jesus glorified you see that this is where concepts as you know like the seven mountains come in now when you now understand the concept of kingdom come the administration of kingdom advance now will introduce concepts like the seven mountains religion education etc etc then it now begins to define the geography of your assignment I'm called to be a professor. It does not matter. The geography does not matter. The most important thing is the belief system that supports you. So you are in a university as a vice chancellor, for instance. But you are not just there as one who just found passion for education. You are there to establish his kingdom. What is kingdom? His purpose is Christ revealed and enthroned. First in the hearts of men and then across every strata. Of human activities you are in business you are not just a CEO in oil and gas and business and real estate and all of that no you are there with intention protecting the interest of the kingdom protecting the interest of Christ so as you make the profits 1 billion 2 billion you are happy because you are making progress yes you see because the key to fulfillment is progress but more than that you are happy that now you have resources for the kingdom. And you can be God's treasurer with pride. His last treasurer disappointed him. He's still looking for many. You can tell him, oh God, I can be trusted to fund nations. And the Lord can speak to you. You can trust God for grace. He needs his healing power to come to the nations so that they don't think he's one of those gods. And now he says, can you be available? And this is not just, they will call you a man of God or a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist. That, that name, that title is just the geography of your assignment. You really are a witness. Now you are transformed. And you have an assignment to see that Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. Can we pray tonight? And ask him to grant us grace. Please rise up on your feet. Thy kingdom come. Just two prayer points and we're done for tonight. 
prayer point number one Lord I am available and I submit myself through repentance to the process that makes me like Christ in experience understanding his ways and being prepared to represent him please lift your voice and pray there's no doubt I am saved but I do not want to stop there there's no doubt I have given my life to Jesus but now I'm ready to be a responsible citizen of the kingdom now listen please theologically speaking and when you look at it very critically when you get born again or saved you really don't give your life to Christ even though we generically say you give your life to Christ but what really happens is you receive his life you give your life to Christ at the point of service it is the gospel of the kingdom that demands that you give your life to Christ are you understanding me now don't go around with this revelation fighting anyone you'll find people say give your life to christ i may even use it now but now you understand in salvation you actually receive his life but when you now surrender your life that is for service i'm saying that because we're going to pray i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours forever I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours. It's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Here's a part of the song that I really like. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. My life, my times are in your hands. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Now, this is the gospel of the kingdom. I do not own anything, it truly belongs to Him. The wealth, the increase, the intellect, it is from Him by him and for him my relevance stems to the degree to which i contribute in seeing the nations come to their knees not just in terms of ministry alone but seeing the governing influence of the father find expression listen to me every one of you under the sound of my voice and you watching in your homes any part of the world you're following from it's important for you to understand that when we are born again, we are saved not only to serve, we are saved to represent, to defend, and promote the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same. Souls saved, lives transformed, society transformed. It is the gospel of the kingdom that secures a territory. It is the gospel of the kingdom that fights crimes. The value system. There is the gospel as the message that saves. But there is the gospel as a value system that transforms. Both are required. The message saves an individual. The value system saves a nation. You have to understand this. If all you have is the message, it's personal. It will save you. You receive of the life of Jesus. But we need to understand the value system called the gospel so that we can institutionalize the value system of the kingdom across every strata of human activities i'm going to make an altar call two altar calls in one 
you are here up here outside or following online and you're saying apostle in truth I do not remember making any genuine decision conscious decision for the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not I'm not aware that I've made such a decision even though I'm aware of the love of Jesus Christ but I've not made that decision number two you are here and you are saying apostle I love Jesus I remember giving my heart to him as you call it or receiving his life but sincerely at one point or the other my life just went haywire and I cannot allow this conference end without making this decision we do not have all the time but wherever you are I hope I'm allowed to do that wherever you are please I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain as we clap for them I'll count one to five don't allow anyone to come before you win that war come and stand here one Calvary Bible Church, are you celebrating salvation? Two. Three. Run to Jesus. You're coming from outside. Run. Run to Jesus. Titanic sank there were only two names whether you were either saved or you were lost you are still sitting and you say apostle I'm not bad but I'm not sure join them quickly we have just a minute for you there must come a point in your life when you will win this war I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Everyone, let's sing one time. will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters and those following online I salute you for making this noble decision can I tell you this rebels don't come to Jesus they run away from him so that you have come before him Jesus the one who died the father revealed his love when he gave Jesus it is true I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I can't lose forever. I will worship you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to save. joining our faith with the angel over this commission I like those of you in front Jesus is here I like you to lift your right hand high above your head as you pray this prayer let it be from the depth of your heart this singular decision will mean your eternal destiny or otherwise you have taken the first step to come out boldly you must take the next step to mean what you say and to only say what you mean. 
Say after me everyone, say Lord Jesus. Say it again from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you love me. I believe that you came and died for me. I believe that you went to the grave. You resurrected for my justification. Tonight, consciously and willingly, I declare that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, and my King. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I belong to Jesus. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. Keep those hands lifted. Father, we present to you the ones Jesus died for. It's an honor to present these ones as trophies to you. We thank you. According to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that you are benefactors of the life of God. I commend you to the ministry of the word. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be built. May you be established. The power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over your life. From today until forever, you walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, now all of you, as we celebrate them, all of you in concert, just follow the counselors. They are waving their hands. They are waving their hands. Celebrate them as they go. Please celebrate them as they go. Are you still clapping? Celebrate them as they go. Just a word and I'm back to my seat. Just like Pastor said, by the grace of God, I'm still here tomorrow morning. I hope that somewhere, um, somewhere as we teach, we'll have the opportunity to just pray and speak over people. This is a kingdom conference. Many of you are coming not just to hear, but to receive. I'd like you to come with your hearts open. Uh, there is no sacrifice that is too much to make it here tomorrow so that you can receive. I believe that this will be one conference that will be an encounter between you and the Lord. So pay whatever price in righteousness it will take to be seated, no matter the sacrifice if there is no sacrifice. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, Grant me the discipline.